morning, everybody. Welcome back. It is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me again is my friend David Zills. David, how you doing? I'm doing okay, but I'm not driving to school. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I'm I'm sitting in a chair right now. Um, my kids are driving to school. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I I didn't help because we were we we're getting ready. That's that's okay though. Um, we we made it through Thanksgiving break, and uh, they're ready to go back. They're not ready to go back at all, but they're there. That's too bad for them, but it's okay for me. It's quieter now. How's it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, <laughs> David, we, we talk apologetics. We talk about sort of the defense of the Christian faith. And one of the things we've been sort of poking through lately is miracles, uh, which, is, which is a touchy topic because everybody has seen, you know, the, the people who, who you know, they, they saw the Virgin Mary in a piece of grilled cheese and we kind of roll our eyes. And there's also just downright unexplainable things and everything in between. And so we've been working our way through this and we're starting to, to sort of wrap it up. Um, where do we want to kind of go from here? Well, one thing I want to be very careful about um, is to distinguish two very distinct, they're related, but they're distinct arguments you can make about, we've been focusing on modern miracles. So two distinct arguments about modern miracles. And I think last time we had a good discussion about, you know, what are some natural explanations, things like, you know, fraud or coincidence, you know, it just kind of happens by its own, on its own psychosomatic stuff where, you know, the power of faith, the placebo effect. And I think that's a good discussion and I'm glad we had it, but I think it muddied the waters because we actually, we started to mix two arguments. So this time I want to, at the outset, make sure we're very clear that these are two different things. And so the, the first argument you can make from modern miracles is to argue directly from modern miracles to either God's existence or the truth of Christianity, which is a more specific, um, stronger claim. And that's, a, I think, the harder of the two arguments to make, because to do that, you have to do two things. One, you have to rule out all the natural explanations. So this is what we talked about last time. You have to say this is statistically significant. It couldn't have happened on its own. That We have to rule out mind-body connections and show that that's not capable of producing this effect and so on and so forth. And then the second thing you have to do is show not only do natural explanations not make sense, but there's a reason to believe that something supernatural might be going on because of the context. So maybe there's prayer or maybe there's, there's, there's preaching or, you know, something like that, where there's some things where we could suspect a supernatural agent might be inclined to act. Um, so I think that's the harder of the argument to make. We touched on it last time, just to kind of go there. But I think I want to focus on the second argument because I think that's the one that we're on much more solid ground. The first one, I'd love to see more research in that area, but I want to focus on the second argument. And that is to say that the miracles that are happening today, the ones that are genuine phenomena, we don't have to ask right away how, what's causing them. Are they supernaturally caused? It, maybe, it's, maybe it is a mind-body thing or the power of faith. But what they do show is that these things are happening and they're reported by credible witnesses. And therefore, and this is the inference, when we see these in the Gospels, we don't have to say, well, those must have been legends or the Gospels are bad sources because they have these crazy stories. We can say, no, if these things are happening today, one of my skeptical coworkers, he said, you know, as an engineer, I can't believe some of the crazy stories in the Bible. And I shared some of the stuff we've been talking about. And his response was, huh, well, yeah, I guess if those things are happening today. So it kind of, we talked about lowering the burden of proof and we can kind of say, let's, you know, if there's good reasons to say that the gospels are good sources. And if the miracles don't have to be a huge stumbling block, then let's look at the life of Jesus. And when we look at Jesus' miracles, there are additional aspects of Jesus' life that are recorded besides just the miracles that strengthen the inference to the supernatural cause, the fact that Jesus is doing something supernaturally. And I think that's ultimately where we have to go after we finish our discussion of miracles is what clues are there in the life of Jesus that strengthen the conclusion that he is something supernatural and not just an ordinary man. Um, and so that's the second argument is to say, if miracles happen today, we don't need to be super skeptical of them happening in the gospel. So let's look at the life of Jesus based on the sources that we know are reliable and see how we can make sense of his life and his identity. 
That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think we've kind of demonstrated that in a lot of ways. The 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 sources you, you quoted, like they're they're not just sort of somebody sort of saying it with nobody to check up on them. There there there's documentation. There there's there's statistics involved. It's it's an impressive thing. Yeah, and so and that's the other thing too. I mean, you talked about um, you know there's a lot of crazy claims and stuff that's just false or wacky or whatever, and you know. We want to avoid the extremes of being so skeptical we'll never believe anything, no matter how good the evidence is, versus being so gullible we don't engage our brains and say, wait, is there a is there something going on here that is like obvious and we shouldn't just blindly accept that, oh my goodness, he's healed, you know? Right. Well, both of them are just sort of not engaging our brains because like if you refuse to consider it at all, that's that's just as as thoughtless as, as taking everything without thought too, uh, without question, without skepticism. Yeah, both of them are different biases, but they're biases that override your investigation of the evidence. Right. All right. So where do we go from here? Well, maybe what we could do is round out the discussion of modern supernatural phenomena, possibly supernatural, I'll say possibly, because you know, we want to let people investigate this and see if, if they think it is. But um, there are a couple of phenomena that aren't in the category of healing miracles, which is what we've been discussing. Um, although one thing in that category, we talked last time about, you know, the power of faith, psychosomatic healing, placebo effect. And there, I forgot to mention one set of cases that I think it's easy to rule that out as an explanation. And that is, and Craig Keener focuses on this a lot. He focuses on cases where people are unconscious or brain dead. Hmm. Um, so if someone's brain is not engaged, it can't, it, it can't heal the body. So, yeah. And so when you have cases where someone's like out of it, not they don't they're not not they're not aware of the prayer or what's going on in the environment i think i think that's the case where you could rule this out and craig keener lists a bunch of those cases but along those lines sometimes when people are brain dead they wake up and they have stories to tell and some of these stories are fake you know there's the guy who the kid who went to heaven and then later confessed no i made all that up but there have been people who have investigated these they're sometimes called near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another category. And some of these um, can actually be somewhat credible, both when you probe it with a skeptical lens and when you probe it with a Christian theological lens. And so I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I'll direct people to a reference. Um, Lee Strobel, I, I talk about him a lot. He has really accessible books and interviews experts. In his book, The Case for Heaven, he has a whole chapter where he interviews an expert on near-death experiences, and he says, you know, can we make sense of this as Christians? Can we rule out natural explanations um, as skeptics? And he does a really balanced treatment. So just a smattering of quick cases. Um, there's a case of somebody who actually converted during a near-death experience. So they they were knocked out. They were not Christian. They had this experience of walking, you know, in their mind of walking down a hallway and there were two guys that came up and they, they were just kind of having some friendly banter. But then after a while, the guys started getting a little aggressive and kind of like poking mm -hmm. at him and beating him up. And then they just got really abusive and like beat him to a pulp and just left him there. And as he's lying there in this experience, he's having kind of out of body. Um, he realizes these guys are living the life that they're, they're doing what I'm doing in my life in, in, you know, in the body, which is they're living for themselves, not caring about other people. And this is the path I'm headed on. And he, and he felt like the sense of darkness and he just cried out, Jesus, save me. And mm -hmm. Jesus pulled him out in, in this experience and restored his body. And it, it ended up changing his life. So, um, interesting stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, there's the question of, did these people make it up or was it just, was it just a vision that they were having like a dream, you know? Right. And so Lee Strobel is very skeptical and probes with the hard questions. And he says, you know, is there stuff that these people experience that we can verify? And there are a number of cases where they where they, they saw or witnessed things in an out-of-body experience that people were able to go check and say, yeah, they couldn't have known this, but it was true. Mm -hmm. um, 
So anyway, that's a whole avenue. Gary Habermas focuses a lot on this when he talks about the resurrection of Jesus as kind of a way to show that we might expect that there could be some kind of life after death. And so Lee Strobel, he, he says, you know, I don't, it, we might not be able to make a case for any kind of afterlife from this because nobody goes to the afterlife because they come back. Um, but what we can show is that where there are cases where people have verifiable experiences outside the body, it shows that there is a supernatural soul that is not um, completely dependent on the body. So it's a whole topic. It's, you know, like maybe I opened a can of worms, but it's, it's another thing. I wanted to direct people to that resource, the case for heaven. Um, it's an interesting area. Right. There, there comes with a, a, a lot of sort of skepticism is warranted here. Um, and I like sort of the, the place where you're going in that we're not trying to prove it, the Christian worldview from it, but simply that the, the existence of a soul, of something more than your body. Uh, because when it comes to the rest, there's actually a very simple test. Um, and it's theological in nature, but it, it holds is, is the vision contrary to scripture? So like if Jesus is all of a sudden picking up Captain America's shield, like maybe maybe you fell asleep with a Marvel movie on um, and it might not be that. Like maybe you, you dreamt that you were Spider-Man and, and uh, fought the devil. And okay, um, I, I, I see where you're going with this, but this is not what your scriptures teach, that, that Christ was, was crucified and, and rose again, that, that he uh, won victory through, through weakness and not through strength. Uh, if your, your vision of heaven includes like a unicorn, uh, for example, hypothetically, um, then all right, I, I, I get that it might be a, a, a meaningful experience to you. But again, that, that points you back to, if nothing else, the, the veracity of the scriptures, that, that God actually does want to talk to you, and he has specific things to say. Uh, we don't have a quiet God. We don't have a God who lets us figure it out, but we have a God who wants to talk, and he speaks to us through the scriptures, that, that this is where then we would take all of our other experiences to have them normed, to have them made normal, so, so we can take our, our experiences in the world and, and our dreams, our, our visions, our near-death experiences, and, and we take them to the place where God wants to say, all right, so this is what is, what are you what are you seeing compared to it and there are some things where we say i saw that I, I experienced that i recognize it to be true and there are places where we can say well if there is a god the god also testifies of other spirits and some of them are not good and some of them want to deceive and and maybe maybe what you saw was was that 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 leads to i think where we're going to go in our next conversation yeah. which is what about miracles and other religions and lee strobel has a chapter on um reincarnation in his book the case for heaven and he talks about cases where people know things from a former life that have been able to be verified but he says so does this prove hinduism so you're right we we have to approach this carefully because if you just take every seemingly supernatural thing at face value you're going to start getting contradictory claims and so that you have to kind of reason outside of the experiences to say how do we make sense of all of them as a whole and that's where you know, if Jesus is who he claimed to be, he has unique authority to speak on issues of life after death and who God is. And so that's why, you know, his teachings and, you know, the teachings in the Bible could be normative than, like you said. Yeah. Um, so I think this is probably pretty good for this episode, but maybe when we come back, we'll start to talk about, you know, miracles and, and visions and other religions. What do you think? Okay. Sounds good. All right, I'll talk to you next time, man. Okay, yep, bye-bye.